Hi, I'm Ben McCarty with the Hood River News, and this is my car. Power locks, power windows, automatic transmission, air conditioning, satellite radio. Heck, if it was a convertible, my six foot five frame would even fit in underneath the windshield. However, the car that I'm trading it in for, for today at least, has absolutely none of those things. It's a mid-1920s Ford Model T at Wham here in Hood River. And today, I'm going back to school to learn how to drive a car that rolled off the assembly line 50 years before I was born. This is Gene Wright, and his job today is to teach a bunch of antique car newbies about the fascinating history of Ford and the Model T. But in 26, when they came out with the cars, they, they started out with zero in 1980. And when they quit in May, the, the 31st, 1927, they had made 15 million, 7,032 cars. We got a look at the inside of the car, the outside of the car, how it runs from top to bottom, how to work the gas. Here's a hint. Don't look for a gas pedal. The Model T, it doesn't have one. The car has three gears, low, high, and reverse. And if you push down on the clutch pedal, it's not going to shift into neutral like a modern day manual transmission. It's going to push you into low gear. After a brief overview of the engine, we learned how to fill the gas tank. Oh, by the way, if you're out on a hot date, your date's going to have to get out of the car to help you fill the gas tank because it's underneath the seat. And she might have to help you check how much gas is in the tank too because there's no gas gauge on the dash. And if you want to check the oil level, the only way to do that, crawl underneath the car to see if there's any actually in there. But enough with the techno mumbo jumbo. I want to get behind the wheel of one of these babies. Andy Anderson was kind enough, or crazy enough, to let me get behind the wheel. That may have been a bit of a mistake. Boiling? Yeah. Uh-oh. Better let it cool. Uh-oh. Boy, it is. 30 seconds in and I already overheated the engine. Yeah. That was really good. A few bucketfuls of water later and Andy let me back behind the wheel of the car. I'm pretty sure that was his second mistake. Because the next several minutes were probably the most terrifying of his life. Oh, you had your foot on the brake. Oh, I, I see. So. Yeah. After killing the car for the second, yeah. or third, yeah. or maybe it was the fourth time, I more or less mastered this beast. Once I just figured out which way to put the gas pedal, when not to push down on the clutch, and which pedal was in fact the brake, I had it down pretty smooth. But after using and abusing the poor car, and probably terrifying Andy for a good 10 minutes, I decided it was time to bring this journey to an end. Even in stopping the car, I managed to do more damage, overheating the engine one last time. Somehow, I managed to pass the class. Probably just because Wham wanted me away from their expensive antique automobiles. I'm sure the cars weren't sorry to see me go. Maybe for a while at least, I'll stick to my automatic transmission and air conditioning.